Would you join me in a moment of prayer today? Most gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. All right, so we have been going through this series called Do Unto Others, using that premise that uh, we are going to treat others the way we want to be treated. And so we've been looking at different aspects of how we would like to be treated. And we started out with the aspect of kindness. And I think we all agreed that we could use a little bit more kindness in this world. Uh, just say amen, that's fine, yeah. Um, but also uh, to realize that it can be difficult to share kindness to those who don't share kindness with us. And, it, and yet that's part of our calling, is to share kindness in every way. Then uh, Mr. Tim talked about compassion and how we are all made in the image of God and you cannot look in the face of anyone and not be looking at someone who is made in the image of God and that we are all precious and loved. And Jesus showed us the ultimate act of compassion by dying on a cross for each of us. And so um, he, he shared with us how to model that compassion to others. And then Pastor Dana talked last week about humility and how many times in our world folks would see humility as a weakness and yet we see it as, as being modeled by Christ uh, to be humble uh, before one another, emphasizing our relationship with God because we are then yoked with God. We, she talked about what a yoke was and what it was used for and how God is there to help us each and every step of the way as we are humble and uh, share that humility with others. And so today... We get to talk about respect. <clears throat> and there's only one person I know that talks about it better than anybody else, and that is the incomparable Aretha Franklin. What you want, baby, I got it. What you need, do you know I got it? All I'm asking is for a little respect when you come home. Hey, baby, when you come home, just a little bit. We won't go into the socka to me, socka to me. That's okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> She then goes on to spell it, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you know, and find out what it means to mean. Apparently, it means quite a bit, doesn't it? So what is it to show respect for one another? What is the meaning of respect? I turn to the experts. The Webster's Dictionary defines it this way. Respect is due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. Respect is having due regard for the feelings, wishes, rights, or traditions of others. And to honor each other without losing ourselves in the process, but to be able to honor and respect others. One time in my um, career prior to me becoming a pastor, I was a marketing director for two hospitals. And one of my projects was to create an interfaith chapel in one of these hospitals. It didn't have a chapel. And so I was um, called to create this interfaith chapel. And I can tell you, that was probably the most rewarding thing I did in my career. Because I got a chance to sit down with rabbis and imams and Buddhist monks and learn about the traditions of each one and what were important to their worship. So that when anyone would enter that chapel, they would feel at peace and they would have what they need to meditate or to pray. And so as I um, formed this, um, at one point we dedicated this interfaith chapel and it sounded like a joke. You know, a rabbi, an imam, and a priest, and a, you know, they all walk into the hospital. So it sounded like a joke, but it was a wonderful experience. And I remember um, at one point um, there was a Muslim prayer rug that was donated uh, from uh, those in the Muslim community. And every time I would walk into this interfaith chapel, I would see that the corner of the rug was flipped up. And I'm being kind of like, well, it's a rug. Shouldn't it be flipped down? And so I would go in there and flip down the corner of the rug every single time. But every time I walked in there, it was flipped back up. And I couldn't understand what was going on. So I finally asked one of my Muslim co co-workers, I said, what is, what's the deal here? What, what, am, what am I missing? And what she told me was that the, um, when there's a prayer rug that lays out and stays on the floor, the indication that prayer time is over is when you flip up the corner of the rug. And so uh, when they would go in and utilize prayer time and stand on that rug, they would turn it down, but then when prayer time was over. And so I was disrespecting 
um, these folks and not realizing it because I just thought the corner of the rug was up again, you know, and so I was trying to, trying to fix it. Um, and so it, it's an honor to be able to listen to each other and to uh, respect one another's beliefs. That was just a, a rewarding thing for me to, to be able to be in that midst and realize the culture, um, and this was in Northern Virginia, so um, I kind of see the culture of Nor Northern Virginia, the mixture that we have in that area, um, similar to this church in Corinth. And so um, anytime you study Corinthians, you will know that Paul was writing letters <laughs> to a messed up church, okay? Every church has problems, but this church was a messed up church. They had serious issues because you had those raised in, in one tradition who were taught to never affiliate with those raised in another tradition, and yet they're in the same church together. And so how do we respect one another? How do we honor one another? How do we be a church together when there's such a divide between us? And so this is the church that Paul is, is trying to help them get through all of these things, and he describes it as a body of Christ. We are a body of Christ. We are all different, and yet we are all important and all to be honored. I don't know if you all remember. Um, I do when I was a child. Um, Saturday morning cartoons were a big thing. Anybody, just say amen. You know, it's okay. Um, Saturday morning cartoons were a big thing, and one thing that was in between the cartoons that we would watch is something called Schoolhouse Rock. I don't know if y'all remember that, um, but we were actually learning on the weekends, you know, but we were having fun with it too. I can recite to you the preamble to the Constitution because of Schoolhouse Rock. It was part of one of those things that they taught us. So they went into math and they went into some English things and you learn about conjunctions and all that stuff and they did all these things. But one of the, the principles that they taught us or one of the sessions was one that was later kind of redone or rethought. And that was the one about the great American melting pot. I don't know if you remember this, this idea of once you come to this area, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, different, different uh, countries even, and yet when you came here, you were part of the great American melting pot. But what happens in a melting pot? You lose your individuality, right? You, you became homogenous. You're all the same. And so the analogy that came out after this was the one of a salad. Um, I don't know about you all, but in my thinking, the whole purpose of a salad is to hold the dressing. That's just me, okay? But every part of a salad is important. You would never put a salad in the blender, right? You wouldn't do that. So each part is important. Each part is different. And so you, you can't have a salad without lettuce and other things that are in it, right? If you're having a certain kind of salad, it needs certain ingredients, but each one remains as an individual item and blended together in the salad, right, where we keep our individuality while at the same time living together. And so Paul uses the analogy of a human body to describe the body of Christ, the church, and how we are to function with one another. We can't say to one another, well, you're not important. Your part doesn't matter because it does, right? Every part matters. And so uh, the sad reality is that sometimes we only notice certain parts when something goes wrong. I don't know about you all, but I have shared with you that I've had significant issues with my eyesight. And I tell you, I have great respect um, and appreciation for my eyesight now. I can tell you all that you're sitting in red pews. I can tell you that there's a red um, aisle here. I, there was a time when I couldn't tell you that. And, and so I, I'm just so appreciative of the eyesight that I do have. It's, it's faltered. It's not 100%, but I can see you, and I am so grateful for that. I, 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 I don't know about you all, but at times um, you're sleeping and you have to get up in the middle of the night. I won't go into why. Um, and so have you ever gotten up in the middle of the night and stubbed your toe, your baby toe, your pinky toe, okay? Does not the whole body know that you just stubbed your pinky toe, right? I will speak to the parents here for just a moment. Have you ever stepped on the dreaded Lego? Have you ever stepped on the dreaded Lego in the middle of the night, right? right? The whole body knows that you just stepped on that, that Lego, right? Because we are there. And when we think about this body of Christ, this church, 
We are there to support one another when one of us is hurting. We are there to celebrate with, with one another when one another is celebrating. We're there as a body of Christ. I can't tell you how proud I am of this congregation and how fast we came together in one week's time to create those flood buckets and health kits. In one week's time, we, we were able to put it together with some very important quality control that happened after the fact, but um, we were able to do this within, within a week. The, the donations came in, the items came in, the help was here because someone in the world was hurting and this body of Christ wanted to reach out and help to, to heal a little bit of the hurt. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Amen. Yeah. Richard, you are part of that. I know. Amen. And so when we, um, when we think about it, a lot of times, um, I don't know if you all are familiar with church service. Obviously, you're here. Those of you joining us online, you're still a part of this church service. You are part of this body of Christ. We're worshiping together. But there's a lot of moving parts that have to happen in order to make a church service go off quote, without a hitch, so to speak, or without any issues. And unfortunately, sometimes we only recognize those things when something goes wrong, right? So I was um, uh, negligent this morning in checking out my microphone and testing my microphone. But I'm guessing if there was a problem with my microphone, you would have noticed the tech team that would come up here and say, uh, Pastor Kathy, something's wrong with your microphone. Um, so we tend to notice those things only when there's something that goes wrong. And yet we're here to uh, love on God as we worship together and as we support one another in every way, including in our times of worship. And so thank you to all those who do the behind the scenes things that often go unnoticed. Um, just thank you for being a part of this body of Christ. When you consider your hand and you consider that me going from this, <laughs> the tech team just put amen on the back, on the back wall there. Um, <laughs> but when you consider your hand and you're going from this to a fist, there are so many things that have to happen in order for that to, to, to go, just like I, and yet it's, it's seamless, right? But if there was something wrong with my hand, those of you who suffer from carpal tunnel or anything else, when you've had issues with your hand, you know just how hard this is, right? My grandmother, um, God love her, had terrible arthritis, and every morning her hands were like this, and she would go to the wall and literally press them open in order to get them to open. Um, we appreciate each part of the body, do we not? And so we can then appreciate each part of this body of Christ. It is no secret that we are coming up on a contentious election. It is no secret that there are folks in this congregation that will probably be voting red or blue. Um, we are not of one mind as far as how we would vote. And yet, can we honor and respect one another and live in the purple? Can we live in the purple? Can we have those discussions with, where we're listening and how can we do this? We lead with love. We lead with love. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, we lead with love. This chapter in, in Corinthians is the 12th chapter. The very next chapter in Corinthians is known as the love chapter. Exactly. It talks all about those qualities of love, that love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't boast, it's not envious. And often when I say this scripture in a wedding, um, I say this part twice. It does not keep a record of wrongdoing. Should I say it twice here? It does not keep a record of wrongdoing. And so he's talking about a church that was dysfunctional. It was struggling to survive. There were people in this church that were suing each other in court. There were people in this church that were considering communion like an all-you-can-eat buffet so that when others would arrive, there would be nothing left. We don't do that here, so thank, thank, thank goodness we don't have these issues. But that is the messed up church that Paul was preaching to. And he also, I believe, preached a message of love, to lead with love. Let's start with a message of love as we learn to respect one another. We may never change the minds of our loved ones. We've talked about how sometimes it's difficult to have those conversations with our family members. But God is with us, and we can honor and respect each other as we listen to one another and as we lead with love.
May God continue to bless and strengthen us together as this varied body of Christ. We all have our gifts. We're not all eyes and we're not all feet, right? We're not all ears, we're not all hands. But we are the body of Christ and we need one another. Let us go forth from this place to share the love of Christ. Let's leave with love, amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I think we're...